Welcome to the Casual Camping Podcast, your home for the best camping discussion both in and out of the field. Here are your hosts, Tim and Aid. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Casual Camping Podcast. I'm Tim. And I'm Aid. Welcome back. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I've had a I've had a lovely holiday, very relaxing. Managed to just do very little, which is great. And uh I'm 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 back feeling feeling the podcast love. Ah, uh, well, there is a lot of love out there uh, for uh, from our, our listeners. Uh, it's very nice that they keep on turning up week in, week out, listening week in, week out. Uh, please remember to uh, press subscribe if you haven't already uh, and recommend us to those people that are missing maybe camping at this time of year as we go from autumn into winter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere again, in which case they're, they're transitioning. What, like Japan? From... Japan! <laughs> <laughs> that it's old good... chestnut. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good job that people don't come here for actual facts, and it is just a, a little bit of... Uh... <laughs> Uh, yes, don't don't come here for geography. <laughs> don't no, don't come here for geography or up to date references like music and films. Because uh... no, no, there's <laughs> no point of that. I keep thinking we need to do a, a camping movie episode, and uh, but it will all be based in films of the 1980s and 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, the the worst historical Hollywood time where they had no money to spend on stuff. <laughs> yeah, and CGI didn't exist, so every, <laughs> yeah. everything was made of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> that wobbled quite a lot. Oh my god! Oh, but we love those films. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is um, this is going out just around Halloween, and last last year we did um, we did some Halloween stories and. Uh, we're just not bothered this time. <laughs> okay. Can we just put it on the line? I had nothing to do with it last year, so you've not bothered, Tim. Okay. Why have you not bothered? Why have you I not was... bothered for our, our listeners? Because I was in Mallorca last week. <laughs> you in Mallorca? <laughs> Majota. <laughs> Did you do how to you, huh? Um... But yeah, yeah so well, ha- happy Halloween, everyone! And happy, happy bonfire night in the yes. uh, in 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 the UK. Not that not that many people celebrate bonfire night anymore. It's um, oh, since we go in and um, you know everything's everything's become Halloween, which is great. I love Halloween. I've I've already carved a pumpkin. Um, yeah. You do love Halloween, don't you? I do. I do love Halloween. Do love Halloween, but I do love bonfire night as well because bonfire night. You know, it's a really big fire. What's not to like? Well, um, so what's not to like if you go and watch one of those ones on a, a football field or whatever is they don't let you get too close. No. So health, yeah. health and safety is the bit not to like for me. I want to get in there. I want to poke at it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The the, the last organised one that I went to, you were that far back. I was actually cold and it was a huge <laughs> fire and I was cold. I'm thinking, I've come to a fire and I'm freezing. I, I literally, I stayed about half an hour and went home. It's um, it's just ridiculous. Health and safety gone mad, Tim. Just you know. Bye. Listen, the, it should just be written into the the folklore of uh, uh, bonfire night fires that at least you know you can't sue anybody if it's less than five percent of people have burns. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, you're in the percentage. You just have yeah. to put up with it. Everybody's <laughs> yeah. just got a little bit. Uh, yeah. Oh great! Sign, Only two percent of people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can come, but you know, if you get burnt, it's not our fault. <laughs> uh, I mean, when we were kids, uh, we used to spend all our pocket money on rockets and bangers, the fireworks that you could yeah. get, and we used to like fire them at each other. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you probably did. 
You probably did with bits uh, of bits of tubing and, and tubing stuff. and a yeah. cardboard box to, yeah. to protect you. You know, <laughs> no. last year, last year I saw a group of lads who would. I mean, they must have not been right in their head, but they had proper big rockets, and they were just coming out of the shop where they bought them, standing in the middle of the road, lighting them and holding them above their head until they were flaming enough to to let go and it would go and they would literally be showered by all this stuff it's like uh, you are not right in the head it's um yeah, yeah. You, play, play need to safe out there if you if you are doing that you know yeah, do do yeah. be careful but um you know a little bit of singed fingers they're they're they're, they're a story to tell in the future aren't they they're, they are and they keep you on the stick safe and narrow i think you know a little bit oh that was hot i've picked up a log i still do it now and go oh that was yeah, too hot. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, um, I've got some burn burn marks on my hands, and it's like, yeah, yeah. But what you're probably saying there, though, is that you you you're probably not learning, are you? If you're still picking up hot logs at your age. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember, that was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I blame I blame alcohol actually for the most part. Like, oh, yeah. I just move. It doesn't look as if that's too red. No, no, I'll just punch that one out the way and just <laughs> knock it over. <laughs> Ouch! Oh. Yeah, I do have. I do. Yeah, the the main burn on 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 my right hand is uh, from punching hot logs. Hey, there you go. That was rum induced. Rum induced good... punching hot logs. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a good sound, uh, song name, that. Punching Hot Logs. <laughs> <laughs> or or is it Punch and Hot Logs, as in Oh, duo. Is it a duo? <laughs> <laughs> Can I be Punch? I don't want to be Hot Logs. <laughs> I'm being Hot Logs. I, I, I sound quite sexy. <laughs> A sexy turd. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Oh gosh! All right then, punch. But, um, I've got a a five star mediocre review for us. Ooh. I know, I know, I know. It's um, it's epic. Actually, I've got to put my reading eyes on and everything. But this is from Adam Rychek. Um, I think it's Rychek. It's R Y C Z E K. So it's, right one of those, it's one of those names that's you know, somehow oh, sound, needs a few more vowels. <laughs> he sounds like a cop detective from a 70s show. Right, check! He does, doesn't he? <laughs> Book him, right, check. <laughs> Spread him, right, check. <laughs> Spread him? Who <Ooh. laughs> is frisking him down? That's oh, where I was oh, going. Right. <laughs> I thought we'd go into a different genre there. <laughs> this will stop anybody uh, writing ever, in and giving yeah, us a five star gonna, mediocre yeah. review. <laughs> Apologies, Mr. Rycheck. <laughs> this will learn him. <laughs> so, Adam Rycheck, um, Tim and Ed, I'm glad to see you're back, even if it's only intermittently. I've, uh, I've been listening to your podcast from the very start, blooming heck. And it has been really quite refreshing. It seems that these days they are all t- they are all too serious, and it's great to listen to you both still keeping it casual. This is where it gets a little confusing. You'll have to you'll have to stay with me. My wife's cousin's husband, cousin in law, he puts in brackets, and I have been recently introducing our boys to some casual camping. Your podcast is uh, great motivation. Ben, cousin in law from is from Derby in the UK. Um, Adam is in the States. Uh, He's from Derby in the UK. So when I listen to you both, it's like being back in the camping field with him, even though your accents vary slightly. I'm sure there are better ways to reach you both, but this is my best attempt. I'm not very tech savvy. Please consider this my mediocre five star review. Well, more than consider it. That might go uh, in the Hall of Fame. Right check. Right check. (laughs) Put it in the. (laughs) Put it in the <laughs> Hall of Fame. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you very much, Adam. That's um, that's awesome. That did reach us, and it made all the difference, and it made us smile. So thank you very much. 
Um, if anybody else wants to send us a mediocre five star review, please do on uh, on any sort of podcast um, app that you're listening to, or get uh, get in touch with us on our socials. Send yeah. us a direct message, and we will uh, we'll read it out in this section, and we will butcher your name too. <laughs> uh, we will. Oh, we'll give you a new name completely, and you go. Oh, the, there's somebody also wrote in that sounded like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apologies if it's not pronounced Rychek. It's um, uh, but if it's not, it should because Rychek sounds cool. Well, you know, Chaz Chasington, he hasn't looked back since. Uh... No, no. I mean, he's got his own TV show now. <laughs> <laughs> We're star makers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Spark, Spark makers. <laughs> That that's a reflection on us, not you, Chaz. By the way, <laughs> I was sounded say. like a sounded like I downgraded him. Then, <laughs> yeah, can't downgrade the Chasington. No, oh dear, <clears throat> he'll be on his yacht by now. I'm sure <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be cruising cruising the Caribbean for winter. Uh, so be- this this week, well, last last week or our last episode, um, if you were. Um, fortunate enough to listen to it we talked about the uh, ending season and what you should be doing if if your season's coming to a close and looking after your equipment and stuff um inevitably that starts to make you think about the next camping season or your next camping trip and um mm-hmm. and you came up with a great idea for this episode which is um what would make your next camping trip better what are those things that you wish you'd had this year uh, that it's a, it's into almost gifting season. So, you know, are these type of things that you'll be looking for uh, to put on a list maybe if Christmas comes along and you've been good? Oh, oh just the things that you want to upgrade. Um, I think this is, it's this time of year that got me into uh, hot tents and camping because I didn't want the season to uh, end previously. This is now my favourite time of year. There's no bugs. There's generally not many people out there uh, as well, so it's sort of quite a quiet time of year to go camping. So, mm-hmm. yeah, af- after the summer and and a lot of your kind of fair weather friends who like to camp in the summer but don't like the, the sort of the other season things. Uh, so yeah, so I thought we could talk about some of the things that you might be looking at, what I'm mm. looking at, mm. and uh, where you might find some bargains because the sales are on. The sales are on. There's a lot, of, you know. It's um, the camping stores tend to tend to view that camping only happens in the warmer months, so they uh, at this time of year they tend to literally slash all the prices. So. If you're a savvy shopper and you you can get online and you can you can trawl through the websites, then you know you can really pick up some bargains. It's yeah. um you got your robins, didn't you, this time last year? And and yeah, that, that great bargain of a tent, that absolutely brilliant bargain of a tent. And then very quickly after Christmas, it just shot straight back up again. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether they're um, still doing it at all, but. Yeah, I think it is that thing of just looking out for those things. Um, There are some great, you know, it is the end of the camping season. If you're trying to get into hot tents and stuff, you won't find many bargains on uh, those around or certainly the tent stoves. But there are the website things, sign up to a newsletter. I know Mm. it's annoying when you get all those sort of emails coming through, but, you know, the reason most of them offer you a 10% discount Read the fine print, see if you're going to spend that kind of money. 10% uh, off £100, quite nice, mm. or $100. Um, mm. But, yeah, sign up for, for some of those things um, or even, you know, make an inquiry and stuff. So, you know, you does have you, always... Does you no harm to ask, does it? Because um, no. a, a lot of these businesses... You know, even if they're even if they're really well known brands, quite often they're small franchises, and it's and it's a it's a small person trying to sell stuff. You know, they might need that sale. You have you know, strike up a conversation, 
They um, mm. you, they might not be able to give you a discount because actually their margins are too tight, but they might throw something else in for free. You never yeah. know. Start a conversation yeah. with these people. Yeah, you know, you never know. And those discounts that sort of people just miss out on and stuff, there are, you know, they're all trying to sell stuff. So, you know, mm. it, it's it's some of those things that I've uh, I've certainly been successful. I know you've been really quite successful just reaching out to people and just asking a question because mm. some, you know, how they entice you. There was, what was it, my Dometic uh, water jug I got from France. And it was the cheapest place, um, and it had been in my basket for about two weeks. And every time I came to check out, there was another sort of 10 or £15 postage, which then just pushed mm. the price up a little bit that I talked myself out of it. And then I just got an email from them uh, to say, uh, we'll give you free shipping if uh, if you complete your process. And I was like, boom. boom. So. It, it's a dangerous thing because having things in your basket, I've bought many a thing that I was like, oh, I've got to hide yeah. this. What day is it coming? Will Lily be out to work? <laughs> <laughs> Leaving it in your basket, though, is actually a really good idea because um, there's that old thing of um, you should only buy stuff, you know, even if it's on a discount. You should only really buy it if you need it. And, I, I'm, you know, I know camping stuff, we need it all. But actually, if you put it in your basket and you leave it 24 hours to think about it, then sometimes you don't always make that massive impulse purchase that mm. uh, that you might do if you just kind of bought it straight away. It just gives you that that cooling off period for 24 hours. And then you yeah. go back and you go, well, um, I've decided to buy that. I may as well add the other thing as well. <laughs> I got a discount on this thing. Oh, I just shoved <laughs> that in. I think yes. I, I bought a Yeti cooler one time. It was like, oh, I got – it was when uh, – in the old days where they used to give you a 30% discount if you're uh, – mm. uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, if you've got a blue light discount, I think they called mm -hmm. it. Um and so, yeah, I just put other things in for this <laughs> that, that totted it up and went, <laughs> well, I might as well. Um, <laughs> but certainly keeping things in your basket or in a wish list and stuff, you get notifications if there's a, a price uh, mm. drop, um, which is really good. Amazon's the one that I know that there's a load of bots on there that do certain things. I notice it more in... When I in my wish list for Amazon Japan, mm. of which I've talked about before, you can sign into any if you you've got your Amazon uh, app, you can sign into other countries and create account for them so that you can see various things. And mostly, the sellers on there either say yes they'll sell sell abroad or not. If I keep signed into my Amazon Japan one. Uh, they notice me coming back in a lot, and the prices, uh, certainly for shipping, go up and up and up if I Gosh. go in three or four times over the course of a week. Whereas if I leave it for a few weeks, the bots realize that I'm a one time purchaser, and I can drop you know, I was looking at a tent that's whatever yen you can put it into, um. Uh, your currency but yeah i i think yeah when i first started looking the shipping was 80 pounds and Gosh. by the end of the week it had gone up to 220 to ship Nothing. nothing had changed in that week it's just yeah. the bots that go oh gosh uh he's from the uk so let's put a little bit more on let's put a little bit more on so i don't know why that happens i don't fully understand it i just know that it did yeah. and so that had the opposite for me uh yeah. but for everybody else keep something in your basket so yeah yeah it just gives you that breathing space isn't it of, of whether or not you're gonna you know pull the trigger on a, on a big purchase it's um yeah, you know, whether that is pulling the trigger on it or waiting to find the excuse as to why you need it how and how you can explain <laughs> it to that loved one that, that might give you a bit of grief. <laughs> uh, Sometimes it's always always a benefit to have a second male 
sort of address that you can have things delivered to, you know, that <laughs> trusted friend or relative <laughs> that you can have things sent to so they don't turn up at home. <laughs> Could I get this sent to you? I think, um, yes. Yeah. It's, yeah, why didn't um, I think of that? We've uh, never done I that. Think, no, I haven't. Mainly because <laughs> I purchased something and then go, why have you not dispatched it yet? Why have you not dispatched it? Even though it's only been like two minutes ago and I'm refreshing and refreshing going, where is this? Where is this? Somebody might deliver it tomorrow. What's this might? I want to know exactly when it's going to be like, well, I could get it delivered to Tim, but then I'd have to go over to Tim's and sit around going like, oh, is your post being? You don't want that, Tim. You don't want that. <laughs> Why is Eddie sat outside my house again? <laughs> We've had complaints from the postman, but Andy keeps tackling him. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. God. So what? Um, so this year, what has what has not worked brilliantly that you're you you've either already bought something for, or you're you're planning on having a look for in the um, in the in the cooler months in the in the colder season? What you what hasn't really worked? So this year. So far, um, everything has worked pretty good. My new big tent worked brilliantly in the summer months. Mm -hmm. I'm only gutted that that seems to be uh, a a a once-a-year purchase uh, when I'm uh, with my lady. Uh, But it's a brilliant tent, and it worked perfectly. Uh, cool. we, um, and I, before we went away, I'd already bought a secondary, uh, blow up under mattress type thing. And, uh, so that all worked quite well. Um, the own, so it's my cooking stuff that I seem to be drawn to. I quite like pizza when I'm away and I don't necessarily want one of those, uh, carry your own pizza oven type things. Mm-hmm. I think they look brilliant. I want something more permanent at home. Home, uh, but I, yeah, I've been looking at the Winnerwell uh, fast fold oven that sits on mm. top of my uh, your stove tent stove. Yeah, mm. um, I've been looking at it, uh, and yeah, just can't. Uh, I really want it. I think it's probably going to go on a Christmas list, maybe, and hopefully somebody else might buy me it. But mm. you know. Uh, I'm not buying which you. Say. No, no, I'm, I'm not. not I'm not buying either. you. I've already bought your Christmas present. <laughs> oh, already got it. You know. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Oh, Tim, you've not been good this year. You're getting soot. <laughs> <laughs> not even fact, coal. I'm not even getting coal. I'm getting burnt coal. <laughs> Everybody's getting soot from aid. <laughs> It'll go well on your gardens. Um, <laughs> Oh, so uh, you should start oh, selling got... little. You should start selling little bags of soot. Little collect little bags of of soot and sell them for like Christmas. Lucky soot from a genuine chimney sweep. <laughs> right, it's good on uh, uh, gardens. Uh, mm? Um high in some kind of thing apparently they used to put explosives in it in uh, the world war the guy that was training as uh, his granddad used to be a uh, chimney sweep and used to sell all his soot to the ministry of defense for explosives uh, carrying gosh lemonade yeah crazy that's eh? a, yeah that's a bit mental Isn't that's like it? people used to do um oh was was it salt peter all the all the stuff from from the bottom of their floors that were like full of like animal droppings and and urine and all sorts of stuff in in like you know when they were first doing like gunpowder, right? People would sweep it all out and sell it to sell it to to the government man, and mm-hmm. uh, and they would collect it all and it was it was all in the process of of making explosives early early on. We're going back a lot of years there, but yeah, might not have been saltpeter, but hey, hey, you know, you don't come here for geography. You don't come here for history. (laughs) You you don't come here for facts. No. (laughs) Unless that's about shopping. (laughs) Then Then, I'm your man. (laughs) Well, 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 your computer crashed a little bit there, and uh, hopefully we can link that conversation up a little bit. I forgot uh, that... Uh, a little camping thing turned up for me. <laughs> 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 in a little bit. 
<laughs> I was like, oh, yes. Um, what is that then, AD, that's turned It up is a Sea to Summit camp kitchen folding spatula that Ooh. Tom, from uh, who we interviewed. Off the beaten pot. Off Tom. the beaten pot, Tom. Uh, he did a, a video that said, oh, and I love a spatula. I've got about four of them. <laughs> so... <laughs> But his recommendation was that actually, because I, I think my go-to one is the MSR one, uh, yeah. and it can be a little bit of flim-flam, mm. which is fl- flimsy for those of you that don't uh, know the word flim-flam. Uh, and his recommendation was it was quite so sturdy and it's got a lock-in thing in, and I'm going to have a play with that later because it folds up and it feels quite sturdy. So cool. like I say, so... That was very relevant to uh, the, that delivery that just happened was very mm. relevant to the recording of this episode because I guess that I'm very similar to most other people that, oh, the camping season, and it just doesn't stop. It's like, oh, what new stuff's going to be out there? Mm. You know, mm. I used to do a, a gear search for uh, new camping gear for 2025 uh, mm or for the following year, whenever that was, and you just start to get re- uh, see previews of what people were going to bring out. And mm. yeah, I think the outdoor magazines all do a, like a Christmas gift guide and stuff, yeah. Yeah. which just keeps your momentum going. If you're not getting out there camping and you don't want to invest in a hot tent and various other things. And if you don't want to go uh, uh, in a, invest in a hot tent, why not hire one? You could do it that way. Mm-hmm. But maybe some yeah. people just don't want to be out in the cold, do they? No, no, it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. And it um, it does give you that opportunity to kind of reflect on um, on your on on your camping season and what's what's worked and what hasn't worked. It um for me, I um I it was it was terrible. All all year long I've been I've been thinking I need a table. I need a camping table, I need a better table. This table's no good. I this little tiny folding thing from Decathlon, um, which they still sell now. It's fifteen pounds. When I bought it, it was only that, five. That's, done you, a lot that's of years. done you quite well, hasn't it? That was five pounds well spent. You know, it's a lot of years ago when that was five pounds, and um, and it's still still absolutely great. You're waving a spatula at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though we're recording, I was like, I'm getting this out of the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> Such a big thing. Um, <laughs> Do you yeah. open all your presents on Christmas Eve? No, I don't. Uh, I once <laughs> found my presents at uh, one time and it ruined Christmas for me. Didn't go looking yeah. again. No, no, um, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, so I, 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 I've been looking at tables. I have actually um, bought a new table. So... Um, so the Empire foldy foldy thing that um, that Tom actually brought to Levu on the farm. I was just so yep. impressed with how it folded up and how solid and sturdy it was, and how the legs you could extended. extend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but um, I think that's the thing: the things that you've been hankering after that you've gone, oh, I'm not going to sort of spend that. Uh, I'm not going to do that when you're not going out there camping and you know going to the expense of putting petrol in your car and getting on a pitch somewhere or whatever. It's this time of year where I go, oh, yeah. And this was uh, a little uh, spatula that's normally 10 quid. It's not a big purchase, but I was Mm -hmm. like, no, you don't need it, so don't. Uh, And then there was a little discount. It was like, oh, six quid if you want to buy it. Oh, okay. It's uh, like with the table. I didn't buy the Zempai one in the end because there's a there's a manufacturer who makes an identical copy, and uh, and it was significantly cheaper. So I bought that instead, and I'm really pleased with it. It's not sexy, which is probably why I've not replaced the table for. Mm-hmm. I've been after a decent table for probably about two or three years now, but it's not a you know you can never say oh I'm going to buy a camping table. Let's all get excited about it. It's, um, it's never, that's never going to happen, is it, people? It's, um, but I have finally, finally decided, yes, I've got a new camping table and uh, I hope next year to be going camping and we'll, we'll get the use of it. It's, um, but yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, I think that's the thing, isn't it? That, you know, for years I've looked at tents, 
there's always a new tent. There's always a, a, a nicer tent. There's always a different shape. And I've done that for years where I've bought and sold and upgraded and downgraded and mm -hmm. got rid of my favourites. I'm talking about that board one that I had. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, uh, so I've done all of that. And for years, you know, would go camping, being quite cold on a night because I didn't have a good sleeping bag. Or, yeah. And it, it was kind of the out season stuff that made me go, for God's sake, just go buy a decent sleeping bag. Uh, and then once you've got a decent sleeping bag, they're not the sexy things, but they are the things that just make the difference for me. They, they yeah. make your everyday Maybe it's just camping. getting older. No, I, I, I disagree. I, th I think it, they make your everyday camping trip more comfortable, you know, whether yeah. that's a sleeping bag, whether that's a table. You know, they just they just mean that you can function around camp and do those essential things of cook or sleep a lot easier, yeah. which which means that you enjoy the entire experience. Whereas if you if you you know for me i've been scrambling around on my knees cooking things on a little tiny table that doesn't fit everything on or i'm i'm literally borrowing a corner of somebody else's table to to cook on and it's just like tim what are you doing you earn enough get money. off just your go, knees just get off your knees and go buy a table christ <laughs> tim there's an image tim scrambling around on his knees <laughs> So, <laughs> hot logs. <laughs> it's hot logs to you. <laughs> there goes Tim on his knees again. He's always wearing them knees out. <laughs> We've had this conversation in a previous episode. I've got terrible knees. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. I've also wow. been looking at lights. It's um I'm always looking at lights. I um I did upgrade the the tent light, the main tent light, um, from the the converted gas lamp that we 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 talked about oh, previously yeah. to uh, to the nice bio light, which is fantastic and I really like it and it's a really lovely light. Does it does it fit in there really? Oh sorry. no, I've no I've not put it inside the um right. The gas lamp because yeah. you've got the smaller of the of the bio lights and it fits yeah. fits nice inside. I've got and the works larger brilliantly. One. Yeah, works brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. I um, but I've got the large one and I, and I just think it's great. But I I so I don't need any more lights. But I'll, you know, sometimes if I'm taking everything, you could call it glamping. So I have been looking at some some nice sort of foldy up lights and things that I uh, have caught my eye recently. I have put um, some images on uh, last week. Uh, some stuff I saw whilst in um, in Parma in Mallorca. It's mm -hmm. um, what was annoying is it's it's more expensive here than in Parma, and it's more expensive again in the US. It's like it's just oh. you know, yeah, it's like literally adding adding like ten ten pounds or euros or dollars to it each time. It's it's crazy. The world's gone mad, Tim. The world's yes. gone mad, and yes. obviously we're two Yorkshire blokes uh, where that uh, are really sort of. Well, I, I'm tight. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 quite tight as well. Really, I I yeah. uh, you know, it's took me it's took me about five years to buy a table. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> You've just blown ten quid on a spatula. You can't spatula. Call, you can't call yourself tight. You spent <laughs> ten pound on a spatula. Uh, it, it's, a good, have... it's a good spatula. Got a little locking uh, uh, thing. So, yeah. I think, very, I think you might good. have to do a little uh, uh, spatula video for, uh, spatula for our video. socials. Yeah, I will do. Um, yeah, and I, I think, I mean, for me as well, there's always that thing, the uh, North Face Geodome 4. <laughs> Which you've finally seen at the I finally big seen go and, I, and it, I'm still not changed my mind that it looks a real ball ache to put up mm. uh, the amount of poles and everything else, and yet you know that was two thousand pounds when it first uh, got released in Japan, and actually you could pick one up for five hundred uh, pounds now. Still a lot of money. Still a lot of money for a tent that would probably take you the weekend to put up properly. Yeah, I know, but I, uh, I just, I, I, 
it's what I love about tents, you know. Yeah. So, so there's also that thing about finding a bargain that mm. you can just justify it because you know um, that you know you you can, you. can you imagine if um, if North Face brought out a geodesic dome tent mm-hmm. that was air beam, like the little air beams that you get on the on the yeah. um, on on some of those smaller tents, those mm. um, two man ones. Then it'd be quicker to put up and less of a ball ache, and you could put it up really quickly. Yeah, it's the show off in me that just likes you know Yeti and uh, yeah. the the Snow Peak kind of stuff. It's just like ooh, you know. Uh, and I'm not much of a show off to be honest. I just like really nice stuff, and I just that tent is always uh, Tim's like. Oh, I, I might I might quite a show off. Have I have I not realised it? I'm not quite a show off with his <laughs> snow peak entire kitchen. <laughs> 14 different sizes of Yeti cool boxes. I, do, I don't do that to brag, though. I do it because I like it. I um, know. I know. Whereas a tent like that, I'd be like, ooh, come and be my friend. Come and talk yeah. to me. But only only until I'm sick of you, and then please go away. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! So, you, are you saying that that in the off season you're going to be buying a North Face geodesic dome tent? Oh, I tell you, I think I'd be kicked out of my house if uh, if that turned <laughs> up. Yeah, but you'd have but, a North but, Face. But now we've already realised that it, it it it's going to be turning up at your house. <laughs> <laughs> Top oh, tips. Thanks, Tim. Um, and just in case Lily's listening, no, I'm not going to be buying that. She's um, not listening. He's not <laughs> listening. <laughs> Thank God. Um, although I had sorted out her Christmas present and she's gone and bought the thing that I'd uh, uh, managed to get. So oh, it's two no. months away. I was oh, I was just too well towels? prepared. Tea towels? towels again. Yeah, she loves them. <laughs> 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 oh uh, god if she is listening i'm sorry lily i know you're not listening but i'm no, sorry I which that. is why i've not told her that i've gone and bought the thing the shoes that she bought she was like i've managed to find them all like, oh, i'm really pleased for you <laughs> <laughs> booger. <laughs> booger it <laughs> well it, it was that mixture of something that uh she just really wanted them and they were a good price. So, you know, it was like she couldn't get a hold of them, so she'd be surprised. And then she's got a hold of them. God damn it. God damn it. God damn so, it. Anyway, yeah. this isn't a shoes podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um but it yeah. Buying stuff at this time of year, finding those things. And you know what? All of those things get you out there the next year, don't they? Yeah. You know, get and, you and I want to try that. Reflect on the on the last, you know, nine months that you've been out camping and and what hasn't worked and what do you need to change. And mm. if you can't, you know, if you haven't got the spare cash for it, stick it on a Christmas list somewhere and um yeah. and uh, and let someone else know that that's 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 something that you'd quite like. And yes. uh, then you won't end up with a load of stuff you don't want for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, can you believe it? It's, 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 we're recording this and it's still October and we're talking about Christmas. Mental. Yeah, uh, it really is. Yeah. Not many, um, days, weeks now. Uh, so yeah, so that's what, um, and, yeah, I think I, I started this by saying that, yeah, I, I'd really like to have a pizza thing or a fast oh, yeah. cold oven. Mm. Um, I think for me, uh, and I'm pleased, I know I'm pleased with my various tents that I've got. I've got the wonderful swag. I've got the big sort of uh, um, safari tent from Snow Peak. Uh Brilliant, brilliant tents. I've got my little fast and light one. It just got various things depending on where where I want to go. Um, and actually, this year has been more about the cooking for me and what mm-hmm. I'm eating. And I like just having a burger. I love burgers. They're really quite nice. I quite like to have a pizza. So I'm sort of considering what are those things that I could maybe have an oven that I do a pizza mm. on uh, that I'd fit on top of my already my stove. 
just gives you another option. But I think, mm. yeah, eating better has been what this year has been about. And the what I've thought would be really complex in doing, say, like a leg of lamb and uh, has turned into, oh, my God, this really isn't complex at all. Yeah. It's, it's quite simple um, yeah. and less bothersome than, um, you know, it takes longer to cook, obviously, but... You don't mess around with it uh, half as much as what you do with uh, burgers yeah. or hot dogs. That's probably something I've reflected a lot on this year is is cooking. And I, I, you know, I've I've got a, a jet boil mighty mo if I'm cooking on gas, and and it's great, but it's a little tiny single burner. And actually, I want to be cooking more elaborate camping meals and doing a bit more. So I'm I'm definitely looking looking at some options for like a twin burner. Of some description mm-hmm. over over the, um, the 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 next few weeks or months while I'm I'm not able to get out in the field, kind of really really looking at something like that that can lift my lift my cooking skills up a, a little bit from uh, from kind of for for years I've I've focused on one pot cooking just to try and keep it fast and light mm-hmm. and easy to clean up, but actually. I want to eat better than that, and and yeah. you've really kind of inspired me this year because you've really gone to town with some some fantastic cooks and wow. um, some great meals, and um, and I really kind of uh, I want to I want to get into that and do that a bit more. I have gone and got myself a um, a stove top um, pizza oven because it was going like twenty five quid in the shop. I haven't mm. yet had the opportunity to use it, but actually it was really quite solid. It's quite a big thing, so it's definitely car camping. Yeah, but actually, it just fits on top of my winter well um, fire pit. Right, it's almost perfectly on top, and uh, and you just let it get to temperature and uh, and start smacking pizzas into it. It's um, so I really, I'm really desperate to get out in the field and yeah. uh, and start using that because that's that's just a, you know pizza is a great thing that you can all sit around and go well, we brought the dough and um and literally you know what what do you, do you want what do you want on it yeah, yeah yeah and just throw throw your own stuff on it and, and stick it in the pizza oven so I'm, I'm desperate to get out in the field and um and get trying that but um i'm some way off that at the moment but we shall see we shall see well i um yeah and, and because i mean i'm going camping in a couple of weeks time uh, a bit of uh, wild winter camping a catch up with a friend that we've not been able to get out for ages so it'll be a, a little bit of a wild one um we're struggling to find somewhere to go at the minute um because there's not many places um that are open uh so i'm even trying the idea of going and finding a farm and just going i don't suppose you've got a corner of a field that we can bung you a bit of quid for a bit of money for and just we'll we'll be gone in the morning kind of thing that's a good um, idea. Well, yeah, you fortune favors the bold, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the other thing that I'm doing at the minute, really, other than those kind of things, is like we said last time. I'm just making sure that my gear is stored away properly, that it's you know not going to get damaged over the winter months. I'm also watching a lot of things on YouTube about mm. people that are out there and their camping experiences. There's a guy I've uh, I've just recently got into AB camping. Uh, I think he's um, New Zealander. Uh, apologies, uh, AB camping, if uh, that's uh, wrong. Uh, but not that he's listening to us. But he does some really <laughs> long videos of just stuff that he's doing, and he's been cool. doing a lot of winter camping because it's their winter at the minute. Southern Hemisphere, Tim. Hey, I know hey, now. Look at hey. that. Look at you. That's learning. That's learning right it's learning. there. <laughs> um, and he kind of does what. He he's just got a really great attitude. So he's very positive. He's very sort of uh, forthright and talking about stuff. And he's got an excellent Jeep and people give him lots of gear to go and review. Oh. Uh, and he's very honest about it. But he does like two and three hour videos uh, of the setup and everything that he wow. does. And yeah, so that's quite inspiring as well. Mm. And every uh, every now and again, our listeners send us a video of where they're at and and that's brilliant as well. Just makes me want to get yeah, out there. Yeah, I mean, uh, today, um, Gary um, Gash fame. Um, Gary, Gash. he it's, 
<laughs> he put on uh, on Messenger about a site he'd been to that's really struggling, and it sounds an mm. amazing site up uh, up in um, in Wales in Snowdonia, uh, not far to the to the um, to the uh, uh, Anglesey sort of area. Yeah. Um, and a, and and a site that's actually really struggling. They put loads of money into it, and it's TPs, and it's you know just sounds great. It's got its own woodland. You can have fires and everything. It looks absolutely brilliant. But they're really struggling and and might not even exist next year. And and as you say, this this it's getting harder and harder to find some sites at certain certain times. So I'm going to give them a blatant shout out. I've never been here, so you know we're literally going off one of our trusted listeners. Um, but Gary's a good guy, um, and it's Greenwood. Uh, Greenwood, oh, this is a rubbish shout out. Greenwoodfamilypark.co.uk, and um, the uh, the if you if you are in our group and you're in our group chat, then uh, Gary's put a link on there to to it. And it does look a really nice site. It looks a cracking site. Yeah, yeah looks really really lovely. So you know, support these sites because they um, there's more and more of them are. Um, disappearing sadly it's um well I, I think the dream of a lot of people around covid and you know getting out of the rat race and going and doing these things i think we saw it in the campsite near york uh yeah. where he was saying that there was lots of discounts he was having to do in order to get people back and back and back um and i don't know what's right or, or wrong you know because camping was about uh, a great experience, but you know, could fit any pocket. Um, yeah. And it it is you know it is getting more and more expensive as people need to make more and more money from it and the cost of running them and stuff. But you know, I, I, it's got to this time of year. I'm struggling to find somewhere to go camping, and uh, you know, we did find somewhere, but they wanted forty quid per person, and you know yeah. what? Yeah, that, that that's rough for a night. Um, you know, yeah. that's, it's not what camping is about. You know, I know you've got to pay fair, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that, but I just think there's got to be some middle ground and, you know, those big expensive pitches with a TP and things like that. I see the value in those, mm. you know, you've got a couple of nights, you've invested a lot, you know, there's some really good things out there, but you know, the, the little things and the little man that's turning up with his tent you know just wants something you know that he can turn up and go quite inexpensively in so yeah yeah, yeah. it's um it's getting harder and harder for that and it? it's um yeah but yeah normally winter yeah. camping does um does get a little cheaper because actually you know there's less facilities and they're and they're, they're more grateful for you turning up it's um yeah but yeah. um sounds like it's quite it's, it's getting tricky tricky to find places even in winter yeah, yeah. Well, we shall um, see. I, uh, I'm looking forward to going in a couple of uh, weeks' time, and yeah, should be nice. Uh, let's hope, let's hope dry it, weather. Yeah, it's dry weather. Dry. It doesn't it doesn't have to be, but I am more of a fair weather camper. Mm-hmm. Dry, dry, dry nights and frosty mornings. That's what yeah. you want in winter. There's nothing, nothing better than than a, a crisp, frosty morning with bright blue skies. It's um, dry nights. So those the uh, don't the nighttime. <laughs> don't, don't. I know where you're going. No, they are not the nappies. I wear. <laughs> <laughs> diapers to our North American listeners. I do not wear diapers I was like, or nappies. Oh. I'm always hoping for dry nights. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think you had that problem, Tim. <laughs> it will come to us all, Ed. <laughs> and with um, that drifting through your mind, here's a minute mindfulness <laughs> for you. <laughs> Welcome to the Casual Camping One Minute Mindfulness. Let the sounds of the outdoors take you back to the camping field.
idea. There you go. The sound of running water. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't uh, uh, ban the thoughts in my head. So. Oh, although, whether or not you need to use them or what, I bet they'd be, you know, keep your, your middle quite warm, wouldn't they? <laughs> Insulated <laughs> pants. Well, save, save you having to go out for that midnight wee I, as well. I, 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 I wonder if anybody up Everest has thought about that. What I'm hearing. Well, <laughs> yes. the... Lee, Lee Donald, our, our Everest climber <laughs> listener, please let us know whether or not uh, you know we've just come upon a, an idea. <laughs> yeah. MSR needs to brand some like nighttime nappies. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the branding on North Face. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, if it had North Face on it, I'd wear them. <laughs> oh, there's, a, there's a Christmas present idea. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Oh, <my> God. <laughs> oh God! I'll have to get some off the ward and stencil on MSR for you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh, there, there's some uh, social uh, uh, interactive uh, posts for the next week, I think. <laughs> yes, show, show us your pants hanging <laughs> off your guy lines. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, On that well, bombshell, let's, um, <laughs> let's call it a day. <laughs> let's call it a day. Keep camping, keep sending pictures in, absolutely to inspire us uh, of the coming uh, cold months. Yep, and uh, and send us your five star mediocre reviews because uh, they make us smile, and uh, we'll read them out. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs>